The weather is about to change entirely across the United States, where we are going to see a big summer cooldown across a large chunk of the United States. And in addition to this, the shower and storm activity that's been happening for several days now is about to shift into an area that has not seen that many storms this summer. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about this big weather pattern change and why there will definitely still be some severe weather out there over the next several days. We are going to begin, though, with what's happening across the United States this morning and right now there are still plenty of thunderstorms out there. We actually had some large complexes of thunderstorms in a few different areas yesterday. We end up having storms actually in Oklahoma and Kansas last night. Those produced mostly damaging winds. Back over in Arkansas another complex of thunderstorms that did produce some isolated severe weather and over in Kentucky we also had some severe weather last night in addition to some flooding rains. Overall though this will be kind of a trend for the next several days. We are going to continue to see lots of showers and thunderstorms across the southern tier of the country and we'll break down more on what that means here in just a moment also we had several tornadoes in new york yesterday there was a small scale tornado outbreak where we probably saw about a half a dozen tornadoes a lot of which did happen back over east of syracuse and also just west of vermont so there were several yesterday a lot of them easily confirmed by radar we did post a few of those on our twitter page at max velocity wx we weren't live yesterday i just didn't think it was enough to go live for but as it played out we probably should have been live there were several tornadoes that didn't up did end up happening on monday we actually did have a derecho so it is officially a derecho from what we had on monday back over in the midwest notice how many storm reports we had in terms of wind damage over 800 reports of wind damage the bulk of those being in the midwest we also had a few over in new york and then about a dozen or two back over in the southeast almost a dozen tornado reports but we've had over a dozen tornadoes confirmed so far a lot of those being in the chicago area really no surprise there and then what we saw yesterday was another day of significant damaging winds in a lot of different areas. I mean, we're not just talking about New York. We're also talking about Pennsylvania and New Jersey and even Missouri. We had some damaging wind reports that was all mostly localized near Kansas City in northern Missouri. In addition to that, we had a couple confirmed tornadoes around lunchtime yesterday just west of St. Louis. We even had a tornado confirmed back over in Nebraska that was reported by a storm chaser in the area. Uh, really crazy, though. That storm in Nebraska could have produced a huge huge and potentially even intense or violent tornado, but it was luckily not able to get to the ground, but it was a very rural area to begin with, but it was not able to get to the ground. It was really rapidly rotating in the cloud base. It was really unbelievable. Uh, Stormer Media was covering it yesterday. Highly recommend checking out their footage from that. It was really just unbelievable. And also, there have not been any tornado reports, quote unquote, at least on the Storm Prediction Center website from yesterday in New York, but keep in mind, there were definitely at least a few tornadoes in New York, just purely from the damage that we saw and also the uh, TDS signatures we saw on radar yesterday as well. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that's going to be impacting the United States over the next week or two and to begin with that we're going to check out the jet stream this does give us an idea of the weather patterns that are happening across the United States right now we do have a digging trough back over in the northeastern part of the United States pretty nice little jet streak as well this is how we did see a little severe weather event yesterday was from this low pressure system it's the same one also that brought the derecho to areas in the Midwest on Monday as we go though into Friday into Saturday, that low pressure system is going to move out, and we are barely going to have any jet stream winds in the United States. It's going to be a very weak jet stream across the entire country. Only the area, the only area that we're going to be looking at anything organized would be back up in Canada, and that's pretty irrelevant for what we're going to be seeing in the United States, and even then, that's just going to be some rain and really not much else. Once we go into next week, we're going to continue to see a very quiet weather pattern when it comes to the upper levels, meaning that there's no really organized severe weather events that are in the forecast over over the weekend and even into next week this ridge that's over on the west coast that's going to really be like a wall preventing most troughs from entering the United States and then once we go into Wednesday into Thursday of next week things might start to change a little bit but even then it's going to be very quiet across the United States. We will still have some severe weather and don't get me wrong but it's not going to be anything organized so that's good news once we get closer to the later half of this upcoming week and eventually into the weekend we might see something so maybe for the last weekend of July for example Example. But again, I don't see anything really imminent that looks concerning. Another thing that's going to be coming is a big temperature drop across a large chunk of the United States. If you're in the Midwest, you're already feeling this. We have a large cold air mass that's ushering out of Canada. And no, it's not winter. We're not seeing snow. I'm sorry to bring your hopes down. We don't have any snow, don't have any ice. But what we will be seeing is a nice little cool down. We're out temperatures back into the 60s and 70s back over in the Midwest for high temperatures today and even tomorrow. That cold air mass will dive into the southern tier of the country 
country as we go into Thursday into Friday. And eventually as we go into the weekend, this thing is just going to be sitting here off to the east of that large uh, high bridge that's going to be back over in the upper atmosphere. And then once we go into Tuesday into Wednesday, just notice how it sits down there in the central and southern plains. So really nice temperature relief across a large chunk of the southern plains and even back over into the Dixie Alley. Now the high temperatures for today are going to be in the 60s and 70s for the Midwest. Still in the 90s and near 100 in Texas, but once we go into Thursday, watch those temperatures fall off, literally. We're going to have temperatures down there in the 80s and even 90s. We'll have areas in the Midwest in the 70s, and then once we go into Friday, notice those temperatures still staying really nice. Even back over to Alabama and Georgia, many areas will only be in the 70s for high temperatures, which is something you don't see very often. And then by Saturday into Sunday in Florida, there will be some areas that are even under 90 degrees for high temperatures. So again, stuff that you don't see very often in the summer, but nice relief nonetheless after seeing all the crazy severe weather that we've seen over the last several weeks. Now, I did mention the weather is going to be pretty active for some areas, and then other areas, the weather is going to be very, very quiet. So let's kind of talk about that on the future radar here for the next several days. Beginning with today, we're going to continue to see showers and thunderstorms on the East Coast and also in the Southern Plains. There will be a chance for severe weather in the Northeast today. We're going to talk more about that here in just a second. Once we go to Thursday and to Friday, notice how all those showers and thunderstorms are just confined to the East Coast or down near the Gulf Coast. And that's going to be a trend really through the weekend as well as high pressure at the surface will be dominating across the Midwest. But once we go into late Friday into Saturday, we might see a little sneaky trough near the surface try to bring a few severe storms to areas in the Central Plains. Overall, this does not appear to be super concerning, but damaging winds, hail, and maybe an isolated tornado or two will be possible. Just not enough again for us to be live here on the channel. Once we go into late Saturday into Sunday, we'll have more storms across the Gulf Coast. And then once we go into Sunday, there are a few things that are going to be happening. We got a lot of showers and storms in the Southeast. We're also going to have lots of showers and storms across really the central and southern plains that will keep things cooler, but it's also going to be a lot more humid. And another thing that's going to be happening as we go into Sunday is that we will have our Connor Croft versus Max Velocity golf match live on this channel as long as there are no technical difficulties. So make sure that you're subscribed down below. That should be a fun one. Hopefully the weather cooperates, but we'll have to wait and see. Once we go into Monday into Tuesday, it'll stay active across the southern tier of the country. Really no relief is coming there. And then once we go into Thursday into Friday of next, week things become a bit more uncertain but we should start to get a few more big storms back over in Canada that might lead to some severe weather here in the United States as well now the cloud prediction center really on board with our forecast and obviously this all verifies basically we are going to be seeing well below average temperatures back over in the central and southern plains so get ready for some relief you might need those winter jackets back over in Texas and Oklahoma elsewhere though mostly below average temperatures while above average temperatures will be dominating just to the west of the Rocky Mountains now percent Precipitation wise, it's going to be really above average for the entire southern tier and even back over in the Ohio Valley and Midwest as we go into next week. So anywhere from Monday until Friday and Florida definitely be active as well with plenty of showers and thunderstorms. So rainfall over the next several days, really all the way through the weekend, there's going to be a lot of rain in the southeast and as well as in the central and southern plains. Once we go into next week as well, you can just see how all those yellows are popping up. That indicates that many areas will be seeing between three to six inches of rain anywhere from Virginia in North Carolina all the way back into Texas and even back over in areas like the Midwest we're actually going to be seeing a little bit of a drier period back over there probably for the remainder of this week and as well as next week. Now, with all that said, there is a chance for severe weather today and tomorrow. And for Wacky Weather Wednesday, we do have a slight risk of severe weather. That goes from New Hampshire and Vermont back over into Virginia. We also have a couple of marginal threats. We got one in North Texas and back into Arkansas and Oklahoma. Got yet again another one back over in the High Plains where the potential for some isolated hail and wind will be possible. And then once we go into tossing trampolines on Tall Trees Thursday, we won't have many tossing trampolines. As overall, there's only a couple of marginal threats for severe weather. We got one in the High Plains and then another one back over in North Carolina, Virginia, and as well as South Carolina, where damaging winds and some isolated hail will be possible. Now, today's threat of severe weather in the Northeast is going to be mostly wind and also some hail. I do want to point out, though, I would not rule out an isolated tornado sometime around maybe like 2 to 4 o'clock this afternoon in New York or even in southern Vermont because there is going to be a little bit of wind shear there. I wouldn't be surprised with an isolated tornado. There isn't any risk outlined by the Storm Prediction Center, just something I want to point out. We might see something brief, so don't be caught off guard by that. What we're looking at for this afternoon will be showers and thunderstorms erupting anywhere from literally Canada back in 
into areas like Pennsylvania. Once we get closer to about 3 to 4 o'clock, we could see a couple of these storms trying to rotate, but overall the main concern will be wind and hail. Once we get closer to 5 to 6 o'clock, those storms are moving more linear into areas like Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. This line of storms will not be as intense as yesterday, but there will be some damaging winds, and then it starts to fizzle out and weaken as it moves towards Maine, and then eventually into the overnight, things are starting to quiet down. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.